Hey, what's up guys? It's John here, Unity 3D Coder, and today's video we're going to be focusing on structs and a little bit of class inheritance. So what's a struct? Simply put, a struct is the exact same thing as a class. Um, there really is no difference between a struct and a class other than the fact that a struct can't inherit anything. Uh, if you remember from the intermediate series on classes, a class can inherit things. Like for instance, every class inherits or derives uh, mono behavior, which basically gives us the ability to add scripts to game objects. A struct, however, cannot inherit. So when is it more beneficial to use a struct over a class? In my personal preference, um, structs are used for small groups of related variables. Um, for instance, in our previous example on classes, we had an item class. And say we had, if we had anything less than five key things that every item has, I would say use a struct. If it's more than five variables that define your item, you should probably use a class because a struct is meant for lightweight things, whereas a class um, is more for heavy duty lifting you can think of it as. Um, there's a few differences between a struct and a class. Really they're the exact same thing. Um, you, When you create a class you're creating a new object using the new keyword. With a struct you don't actually do that. Um, when it comes to similarities though, I mean literally they are the same thing. Uh, structs can have constructors, they can have constant variables, which are variables that can't change value. Uh, they can have fields, which are variables. They can have methods, they can have properties. They can have everything that a class can have. So let's go ahead and take a look here. The example we're going to create is we're going to have a player that's going to have class of items. And I'm going to show you a little bit of class inheritance, and then I'm going to show you what a struct can't do. So a class can have class inheritance, but a struct cannot inherit anything. So let's go ahead and look at this. So let's go ahead here, I'm going to create a player class. And it's going to inherit from mono behavior, and then we're going to create another class inside of here to create items for our player. So here's our player, which inherits mono behavior. And then we're going to go ahead and create a new class called item. And inside this item class, we're going to have uh, some properties. Every item is going to have an ID, and then every item is also going to have a name. So we're going to say here and item ID, string item name. Now, typically the way we know how to create items through script is we use a constructor and then we use a new keyword to define it. Well, I'm not gonna go ahead and create a constructor yet. I wanna show you how you can actually do this without a constructor. And the way you would do that is you would literally go into here and you would say um, item and then say we wanna create a sword equal, or actually, I'm sorry, let's say we wanna create a book. And then you're gonna say equals a new item. And you just initialize it like that. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and say book.itemID equals 5 and book.itemName equals, um, we'll say Harry, I don't know if I can actually say that. We're going to say Harry Totter. <laughs> Alrighty. So we have our book.itemID is 5 and our book.itemName is Harry Totter. Okay, so we just created a book. And if we go ahead and just make sure we have no errors, we'll be good to go. And make sure the script is on the player. I'm sorry, make sure it's on the main camera here. Which it is. All right, good, no errors. Okay, so we just created an item. Now, what if we wanted to further advance this? Say you had a base class for your items. Every item has an ID, every item has a name. Well, this is gonna share every item. Now, what about special items? Like, for instance, what about weapons? Um, weapons have not only the item IDs, they have item names, but they also have like stat bonuses, right? Some of them might have 20 stat bonuses. So how can we go ahead and make use of that? Instead of cluttering up this item class, let's go ahead and create another class of type weapon. So we're going to say public class weapon, and it's going to inherit from item class. Now what this is going to do is every weapon that we create is automatically going to have the properties of item because it inherits it. So every item, every weapon that we create, if we create a gun, it's going to have an item ID, an item name, and then for instance, what are the weapon properties? Say we have here public int attack bonus, and then public int, um, we'll say agility bonus. Alright, so when you create a new weapon, it has an item ID, an item name, and then it also has these two fields. So how would we go ahead and create a new weapon? We would do it the exact same way. I would say here, 
weapon, and then let's go ahead and create a gun. Equals a new weapon. And then you would say here, the gun dot item ID equals one. The gun dot um, item name equals gun. All right, and then you have here the attack bonus equals five. And then you have here gun dot uh, agility equals 10. So now we have access to those. So they still inherit the item IDs because it's an item. It's just a separate class. We use class inheritance to tidy up our code and be more modular, if you will. Uh, it just allows us to organize our stuff in a, in a much cleaner manner uh, and, a, and just a more efficient approach, really. Now, here's where it becomes a problem. What if I wanted to use a struct? Because this is pretty lightweight when you think about it. I got two fields here, two fields here. And, and according to my rule, anything less than five, it can be a struct. It doesn't have to be, but it can be. And it's probably more efficient to use a struct. They're more lightweight. Um, but there's a problem here. Structs can't inherit anything, which means I can't have this inherit this. And how do we declare a struct, by the way? It's literally the same thing as a class, but you replace the class keyword with struct. So here, I have two structs. I have a struct for item, and I have a struct for weapon. I'm going to get an error here because I'm inheriting from item. A struct cannot inherit anything. Uh, when we get into interfaces uh, later down the road, they can, they can implement interfaces, but that's different from inheriting a class. Okay, And a struct can't inherit another struct. So a struct can't inherit anything. So it needs to be something where you can just declare it. Now, the way you declare a new weapon or a new item, so let's go ahead and actually get rid of this, which means we'd have to combine the attack bonus and agility bonus this way. If we wanted to create an item, we can't do it through the new item class, uh, the new item here anymore. We don't have a constructor in the background. There's no constructor by default. You have to declare a constructor uh, in order for it to work with a struct. In a class, automatically a constructor is ran behind the scenes. With a struct, you have to declare it as a constructor if you want one to run. So, how do we create an item if we're using a, a I'm sorry, if we're using a struct? Well, it's pretty simple here. You do it almost the same way. You just say item, and then let's go and create a sword. Sword. And then, literally, you're done. No need for the new keyword. You say item sword. That created the sword. Now you can say here, sword.itemID equals one, and sword.itemName equals sword. So this is pretty much how structs work. Uh, before I wrap up this video, I want to go ahead and give you guys another really pretty simple example. Um, I wrote a book, okay? So let's go ahead and say I wanted to create a program that's going to allow me to create multiple books down the future and I can determine a price, a title, and an author. Maybe I'm a publisher, okay? So what I can do here is I can go ahead and here, I can do it two ways. I can create a class, so I can say here, public class, book okay so we're going to create a new book and every book is going to have a price so I'm going to say public int price every book has a title and then every book also has an author All right, and it's going to be a string so using this class um, I can create the class by just saying um, public I, I'm sorry I could say book and then you know I could say my book unity programming equals a new book or I can declare it a constructor if I want to, um, which I might do. So I can say here public, um, we'll say public book, and then you can pass through, we'll say int p, the title is a string. So here we'll say string title, string t, and then we'll have string a for author. All right, and then I would say here this.price equals p, this dot title equals t and then this dot author equals a so every book that we create it's going to have these three things and it's going to assign them now so we can see this in the inspector i'm going to go ahead and serialize this all right just put that over and it's going to serialize it allow you to see it in the inspector and what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to go and create a book so i'm going to say here public book uh we'll say public book Let's say Unity Programming equals a new book, and I have a constructor to fill in. So the price will say, will say $30, the title is going to be Learn to Code, 
and then the author is going to be Jonathan. All right, and if we go ahead and test this out, um, I need actually a function in here. Well, that's a variable right there, but uh, hold on. All right, and I'm not sure if I can declare it outside of a function like that, but we're about to find out. All right, apparently I can. All right, good. So there you go. So Unity Programming, the price is 30, title, learn to code, author Jonathan. Now, how would we do this exact same thing using a struct? Well, let's go ahead and just start. And here, we can do it from scratch. We can go ahead and here, we can say public struct. And if we don't system.serialize this as well, we're not going to see it in the inspector. So if you want to see it in the inspector, you need to keep it system.serializable. So public struct, and we'll say book. All right, and this is obviously lightweight. We only have three variables. So every book is going to have an author, or I'm sorry, every book has a price. All right, every book has a title. And then every book has an author. All right, now because we don't have a constructor declared, we can't use new book or anything like this. It's going to give me an error. It doesn't know what that is. So instead, I can just say here, I can say public book Unity Programming. And then if I want to do anything else, like if I just save this, uh, it's going to be blank in the inspector. And actually, it's going to give me an error. Hold on, let me reset the script. Let's see, unexpected symbol void in class struct. Oh, I forgot a uh, semicolon here, guys. Sorry. So public book, Unity programming, and it should be blank in the inspector. Let's see. If I reset the script, Okay, so it's going to be blank in the inspector. I can fill it in there. But if I want to fill it in through script, I now need to go into void start probably to initialize it. So I'm going to say here, uh, we're going to say unity programming dot price equals 30. Unity programming dot title equals learn to code. And then unity programming dot author equals Jonathan. So at the end of the day, guys, there really is no difference. If you're using class inheritance, uh, you have to use a class. But oftentimes, you can get around almost every task without the need for class inheritance. Um, I personally don't use it that much. I really don't ever need to. Um, if I, if it's to the point where I'm using class inheritance for an item, uh, for for like an item class, um, at that point, I will have transitioned to a database for my items or an XML file. But um, that's for a later date. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the Unity Inspector. Let's go ahead and just make sure that this works. When I run the game, it's going to be populated, and it is. So if you have any questions on what this video covered, let me know in the comments. Make sure you're following on the Facebook page. You can find all the links in the description. As always, thanks for watching.